I really wish that we could just eradicate the term negative from our vocabulary, especially when we are talking about our thoughts and our emotions. I think we all know what we mean when we use this term to describe these things, but I don't think we realize just how impactful it is. Hey there, my name is Katie. I'm a licensed therapist and I firmly believe that therapy and counseling topics can be so very life-changing. So here we are hopefully making this information much more accessible so it can be impactful for your own life. I do this here for free on YouTube and I also have super affordable therapy inspired workbooks and journals for purchase on my website. Okay, so typically when we use the term negative to describe our thoughts, our emotions, our memories, or our experiences, what we're really saying is this thing is really uncomfortable and I wish I didn't have to experience it. This seems harmless enough, right? But what we're really saying when we label some things as negative and some things as positive is that some of these experiences we should be experiencing a lot of and others we should only be experiencing if things in our life have gone terribly wrong. Not only does this line of thinking lead us into a whole lot of discontentment and just disappointment in general, it can also elicit these internal anxiety spirals that are pretty hard to get out of. I've talked about this a lot on this channel, especially in relation to anxiety because I'm an anxiety therapist, but this really applies to any thoughts and emotions that we are labeling as bad or negative. When we use these types of labels to describe our experiences, again, external or internal experiences like thoughts and emotions, this practice sends the signal to our mind and our body that these things that we're identifying as bad or negative are actually dangerous to us, which is really how it elicits this anxiety cycle. Every time that we respond to these experiences in this way by labeling them as bad or labeling them as negative, this sends those signal. And anytime that signal gets sent, the next time we go into that same or similar experience, our anxiety, our nervous system is going to ramp up our protective response, meaning that we're going to experience more anxiety and a stronger desire to avoid those experiences or eliminate them entirely. This is typically the process that leads to a really, really strong or loud internal battle. Now, changing how we respond to our thoughts and our emotions and maybe using different language in order to describe our thoughts and emotions absolutely takes time. These are kind of automatic processes that we've acquired over time. And so it's going to take time to change the res these responses as well. So if you choose to be on this journey towards changing the language, language that we're using, especially in relation to these internal experiences like thoughts and emotions. Just try to give yourself as much grace as possible because it does take a whole lot of time and patience. But here are a few general steps to follow if you would like to start this process of changing the language that you're using so we no longer have this consistent or chronic internal battle. Firstly, it's going to be extremely beneficial to raise our own awareness of the things that we are experiencing on the inside. So often we're going through life and we just have all of these internal experiences and we don't really take a minute to, to stop and reflect on what's crossing our mind, what are we feeling within our body, and how is it impacting us. So taking the time to actually pause and become aware of these things, this can really be impactful for making a change if we choose to do so. Some things that can help us raise awareness are like meditation, journaling, having mindful check-ins. These can really help to raise that awareness. Then once you start noticing that maybe we're using kind of unhelpful language in relation to our thoughts and our emotions, then we get to pause for a second and just acknowledge that this has happened. We're not trying to eliminate it. We're not trying to immediately change it by any means. We simply need to acknowledge that this has occurred. This is not a blaming thing or a time to cast any type of judgment. Next, we can do our very best job to respond to these experiences neutrally. Maybe this means we describe how it feels in our body or say, oh, you know, I'm having the thought that blah, blah, blah. And as you are noticing and responding to these things as neutrally as possible, kind of like you're your own observer or witness to your internal experience, as you're going through this process, do your best to slow your breathing down as well. Odds are, once we are using unhelpful language, we are eliciting that anxiety response, whether we want to or not. And so our breathing is going to start to become shallow. So if we can deepen our breath here, that can go a long way to saying, hey, okay, we're having this experience. We 
know that it's uncomfortable. We know that we're having it, but if we can slow down our breath here, we're sending that signal to our brain that says, I know that this is uncomfortable, but also we are safer than we think we are. For example, if I am feeling a lot of anger for some reason, my response to this might be to pause, close my eyes, intentionally slow down my breath and really start observing. Where is this anger feeling in my body? What might be underneath this anger? What am I noticing here? How is it impacting the thoughts that are crossing my mind? Are these thoughts that I want to act on? Or are these thoughts something that I don't want to act on because they don't align with who I want to be? I would really just take a step back and observe my experience and kind of go through those observations internally. With time and practice, responding neutrally to our thoughts and emotions rather than having these labels of negative or bad attached to them, this will lead to a decrease in that internal battle that we often have going on inside of us. With time and with practice, our automatic response to these thoughts and emotions is going to shift from this thing is dangerous, I need to make it stop immediately to, oh, I'm having this experience. It's kind of uncomfortable, but I know it's going to pass. How can I care for myself well through this experience? I hope this topic has been helpful for you guys. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are or maybe what your experience has been with, with language and what you've noticed in relation to using different types of language with your own thoughts and emotions. And I will see you guys next time.